Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about strings in C Sharp. Now, strings are one of the most useful types of data that you're going to be working with in C Sharp. So in this tutorial, I want to just show you all the ins and outs of working with strings. We're going to look at some of the cool things that you can do with them and how you can really leverage the power of strings inside of your programs. So down here, you'll notice that I just have this little console.write line instruction. And basically, this is just going to write out some text onto the screen. So if I wanted to create a string, I can just make these open and close quotation marks. And then in here, I could type out some text. So I could type out like draft Academy. And now when I run my program, it's going to go ahead and print that on, onto the screen. So anytime that I want to represent some sort of like plain text or really any type of text in my program, I can do it with a string. And there's actually some cool things you can do with these strings. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to print out draft Academy, but I wanted to print out draft on one line and then Academy on the next line. I can use something called a new line character. So I could actually say backslash N. And this is a special character um, that we can use in C sharp strings, which is basically going to specify that we want to type out draft, then a new line, then Academy. So now when I run my program, you'll see that draft and Academy are printed out on different lines. So that can come in handy when you're writing out your strings. Um, there's also another way. Uh, so if, let's say that I wanted to write out a quotation mark. If I put a quotation mark here, you'll notice that this quotation mark effectively ends this string. And then this over here is just causing an error. Um, if I want to actually print out a literal quotation mark that's not you know, delineating the string, I can just use that backslash again. And now we'll be able to print out that quotation mark. No problem, just like that. So those are some cool little things that we can do inside of our strings. Um, you can also take a string and store it inside of a variable. So a variable is just a container that you can store different pieces of information. So if I wanted, I could create a variable over here just say string and we can just call it like phrase. And I'm just going to set it equal to this text over here, which is just going to be draft Academy. And then down here, I could just print out the value stored inside of this variable. So I could print out the value stored in the phrase variable and we're still printing out draft Academy. So that's kind of cool. Um, another thing you can do with strings is called concatenation and, inca and concatenation is the process of taking one string and then appending another string onto the end of it. So you're essentially just adding two strings together. So for example, over here, I could say string phrase is equal to draft Academy. And then I could use this plus sign. And then this is basically going to add another string onto that. So I could say like, is cool. And now when I print out phrase, it's going to be printing out draft Academy is cool. So it basically just added those two strings together. We would call that concatenation and that can be really useful. Another thing we can do in our programs is find out information about our strings. So sometimes you might want to figure out different pieces of information about the string, um, figure out some attributes about it. So let's say we wanted to figure out how many characters were inside of this string. I could just say phrase dot length and that's with a capital L. And now what this is going to do is it's actually going to tell me how many characters are inside of this string. So now we should get like 15. Yeah, because there's 15 characters inside of draft Academy. So that's a really cool way we can find out some information about the string. In addition to finding out information, we can also use things called methods. And we're going to talk more about methods in a future tutorial. But essentially, all you need to know right now is that a method is basically a little block of code that we can call, which is going to perform a specific task. So these are basically like little predefined snippets of code that um, we can sort of tell to execute and then they'll do something. So we can use methods on our strings and they'll either give us information about our strings or they'll modify our strings in some way. So over here, if I want to use one of these string methods, I can just say the name of the string or I could also type out like a literal string like that. And then I can just say dot. So I'm going to say phrase dot. And now I have access to all of these different methods. So if I want to use one, I can just type out the name of the method and I'll show you these can kind of uh, do little things with our string. So let's say that I wanted to take this string over here and convert it into all uppercase. Well, there's actually a method that's going to be able to do that for us. So I could say phrase dot to upper and then I'm going to make an open and closed parentheses. And now this is actually going to take this string over here convert it into uppercase and then print out the uppercase string onto the console. So now when I run the program, you'll see we get draft Academy all in caps. You can also do the same thing for lowercase. So I could say like two 
lower and now it'll do the same thing. So it should all be entirely lowercase now, which it is. So that's one way that we could like modify the value of a string. We could also find out some more information about this string. So imagine we wanted to figure out if this string of text contained a certain like substring of text, right? So maybe we wanted to see if this string had the word academy in it. I could say phrase dot contains. And now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna give this contains method a piece of information. And this is called a parameter. So this over here, this contains method will tell us whether or not this phrase string contains like a certain set of characters or something. And in order to use it, I have to tell it what I'm looking for. So I can say phrase.contains, and in here I could say like academy. And this is basically gonna return a true or false value telling me whether or not the phrase draft academy contains the word academy. And we should get a true value back because it does. So you can see over here we get true. But if I said over here like academies, now all of a sudden we should get false back because that string is not included in the phrase string. It's not included in draft academy. And that can be kind of useful. You can like tell whether or not a certain string contains another string or another character. Another thing we can do is figure out the different characters inside of a string. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Let's say that I wanted to figure out what the first character in my string was, right? So let's say there's a situation where I have a string like phrase and I wanted to figure out what's the first character in that string. Well, I can actually access individual characters and print them out. So I could say like phrase and I can make an open and closed square bracket. And inside of here, I can just put the index of the character that I want to print out inside of the string. So if I put a zero here, this is gonna tell me what this first character is. So phrase square bracket zero should be printing out a capital G. And you see over here, it does. If I wanted to figure out what the third character in the string was, I can say zero, one, two. So I can say two, and now this should print out that R for us. And you can see we get R. So if you haven't caught on by now, when we're indexing a string, we actually start at zero. So if I was going to assign index positions to each of the characters inside of this string, I would say that the G character is at index position zero, the I character is at index position one, the R character is at index position two, the A character is at index position three, etc. So the first character, this G, is actually at index position zero inside of the string. And that's basically just a way that C sharp, and actually a way that most programming languages index strings. So when I say phrase zero, this is actually referring to this first character. So let's see if we could print out this A over here. Well, it's basically gonna be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is gonna be at index position eight. So if I put, if I put an eight in here, now we should be able to print out that capital A which we do over here. So that's sort of how uh, string indexes work. And using this information, we can use another string method. So again, I'm just gonna say phrase dot. And I wanna show you guys another method that we can use. It's called index of. And index of is basically gonna tell us not only if a string contains a certain value, but it'll tell us at what index position that value is located inside of the string. So for example, if I came over here and said academy, this is gonna tell me at what index position academy starts inside of this string. So when I run my program, you'll see that we're getting an eight over here. And we just sort of saw that that capital A character started at index position eight. So basically what this is saying is that academy starts at zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it starts here. In addition to passing in a string like that, I could also pass in a character. And remember, a character is just an open and closed single quotation mark. And then inside here, I could put like an F. And now this will tell me the location of the first F inside of this string. So it'll give me that index. And you can see we get four. And that's because zero, one, two, three, four, this starts at a four, and that can be pretty useful. There's also gonna be the situation where uh, the character isn't in there, so if I put a Z in here, you'll notice that there's no Z up here. And so in this case, we're actually just gonna get a negative one back. And a negative one is always gonna signify that the character 
is not inside of the string. So that can be pretty useful. So that's how we can use phrase.index of, and that'll come in handy a lot. There's also one more of these string methods that I wanna show you, and it's called substring. So I can say phrase.substring, and I can make an open and close parentheses, and I'm actually gonna to need to give this a value. So basically what this will allow me to do is it'll allow me to grab a part of this string. So I could grab like, one part of the string and then print that out onto the screen. And we can give this one parameter, we can give this one argument, in other words, one piece of information. And that's basically the index where we wanna start grabbing the string at. So let's say that I only wanted to grab this academy word and print this out. Well, remember, academy starts at index position eight. We already saw that. So this capital A is actually index position eight in the string. If I put an eight in here, this is now gonna grab the characters starting at eight and going to the end of the string. So now we should just print out academy, which we do down here. You can also, in addition to just passing in the starting index, you can pass in a length. And you'll notice that I'm just using a comma here and that's gonna delineate that I wanna pass in another value. So I'm passing in the starting index and then I can also pass in how many characters I wanna grab. So. I can say I wanna start grabbing the characters at eight, and let's say that I only wanna grab three characters. So over here I can put a three. And now we're gonna start at eight and we're gonna grab one, two, three characters. So we should get ACA printed out onto the screen. And you can see that we do. So that substring method can come in handy. So that's kind of the basics of working with strings. And you know, so I showed you guys kind of how we can work with them, different things we could do like concatenation, and we can also print out things like new lines. We also looked at getting information about a string, like the length and you know individual characters in the string. We talked about the string indexes. We also talked about different methods that we can use to do different things with our strings. So hopefully that kind of gets you up to speed with why strings are awesome and how they're useful. And to be honest with you, there's a lot more of these little methods that you can use. And if you want, you can just go online and Google C sharp string methods and you'll find like a huge listing of, you know, probably at least, you know, a few dozen of these different methods that you can use to either find out information about or modify your strings. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.